Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for stopping by. So today we're talking about one of my favorite topics on this great little Mavic Air quad and that is how to get the best cinematic settings for your video footage. Several areas. We're going to cover the moment the image comes into the camera, hits that first ND filter. We're going to make sure we get the correct exposure settings on the camera. Then we're going to go up and make sure we have the correct settings on the gimbal itself to make sure that that is smooth as possible. Then we're going to go into the quad, the Mavic Air, and we're going to make sure that the Mavic Air is flying as smooth as possible by adjusting some of the sensitivity settings, the yaw settings, to make sure that you're getting the exact video clip that you want every single time. Coming up. All right, so let's go in and let's talk about how to set up the camera initially. And we'll go into the camera settings here. And for right now, I just want to go to style and we're just gonna look at the custom settings. So here, what you wanna do is you wanna, you basically wanna take a lot of the, um, the color and the saturation out in the recording so that you can add that in post. So if you're looking at the uh, shapes on the, on the top, it's sharpness, contrast, and saturation. So the sharpness triangle, you wanna just leave that at zero. You can, you can add a little bit of sharpness in post. So, so next is the contrast. And so the contrast is, the th is basically what allows you to capture the video in the uh, in the light and in the shadows as well so if you put that at negative three it kind of opens up a, a much better dynamic range you know if you're filming a lot in the golden hours like in the you know the hour right after sunrise and then the hour right before sunset you're going to have a lot of light in the sky as the sun sets or comes up and then you're going to have a lot of shadowy areas as well but you want to capture the detail on both of that to give you the best possibility of creating something that you're happy with in post so negative three works for me um, check it out negative two negative three somewhere in that range should be perfect for most folks the last one is saturation i leave that at negative two just so i don't add too much color and then i put some kind of a filter on you know in post so i just leave it at negative two works for me okay so next let's go into setting the correct exposure for your camera Okay guys, so next I want to talk about the exposure on your Mavic Air and this is where things get a little bit tricky and you're going to need one additional thing and that is an ND filter. So the ND filter basically allows you, uh, you know, a lot of people just say it's like sunglasses to the, you know, for the lens and that's true to a certain extent. But what that does is it allows you to decrease your shutter speed enough to allow enough motion blur in your video footage that, that is comfortable for the human eye. If you look on my screen capture at the moment I am at 4k 30 so I'm running 30 frames per second and my shutter speed you see is way up at 500 so that's way or that's way too fast to be comfortable for the human eye but that's what's needed because I don't have an ND filter on so I'll put an ND filter on here shortly and show you what the difference you know what the difference looks like okay so most people are in agreement and this is where it's going to become controversial that the most cinematic frame rate is either 24 or 30 frames per second but to tell you the truth it doesn't matter i choose 30 just because it's simpler mathematically but uh you know and if you're in europe a lot of folks use 25 frames per second because that's the standard over there but anyway in that range is what you need but that's that's um so, so that's the basis so you want to start with one of those three obviously the next decision you make is the shutter speed based on the frame rate so your frame rate is at 30 in this example so your shutter speed to follow the 180 degree rule is twice what your frame rate is. So in my case, I need to have a shutter speed of 60. So let me show you what that looks like and what kind of a problem it causes. So my shutter speed back over here is 500. Now if I say my frame rate is 30, it means my shutter speed needs to be 60. So that's what you get it's not good right so that's totally blown out and that's why you need the ND filters so the ND filters put the sunglasses on to an effect and that allows you to you know have the proper amount of, of, of motion blur so what is motion blur so if you think about in the olden days when you had the film strip going over and over you know on the film reel they had a, a shutter and that shutter would basically open and close 30 times per second and that was the most cinematic look you know for all intents so if you look at you know if you do like that with your hand and hold that out in front of you you see how kind of how blurry it is that's that's normal so you want to have that kind of blurriness when something's moving very fast or else it's going to look very augmented okay so with those two things we've got frame rate and we've got the shutter speed set at 60 so what else can we do so next is your iso you want to always have your iso at 100 
or that's the goal. The ISO in my mind is the thing you want to move as a last option. You know, in low light conditions, you would you could creep that up, and you only want to creep it up as much as you have to. But uh, but the quads can only go up so high, and then the, then it just adds too much noise and granularity to your shot. The other thing that is here that you can't change is the focal um, the f-stop or the aperture on the Mavic Air. So this has a an f-stop of 2.8. I'll show you what that looks like. If you have a fixed focal length uh, on the quad, it's 2.8. And that basically is the amount of light that enters and leaves the lens. So if you look at this lens, for example, just a, a Panasonic lens, you kind of see the hole in there, change the zoom. That's basically the, the size of the aperture. It does, doesn't matter on this, on this quad, it's fixed, so you get what you get. Um, so that's one option that you don't have to change, but that's helpful because that allows you to know exactly what else can be changed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put the ND filter on and show you guys what that change looks like. Okay, so I picked up these little, I picked up these little ND filters from Polar Pro. Anyway, these screw on to the end of the camera. There's a lens on the Mavic Air. You unscrew that lens and then you add these on there. So this one is, uh, starts out with the ND4, ND8, and then an ND16. Show you this the best I can, but so you can see the bottom part the bottom part screws on and then the, the top part rotates independently and it is just like a sun you know a pair of sunglasses for the for the mavic and again these are from polar pro i had polar pros for my mavic pro that worked really well so i got the same you know basically the same brand from uh, for the mavic air so i think polar pro makes good product so um anyway check those out if you need them okay so check it out so now i've got I didn't change anything else. All I did was put the filter on. So everything is exactly the same. I still have my 4K 30, 30 frames per second. My shutter speed is twice my frame rate. So that's at 60. This is with an ND16 filter. Super bright outside, totally clear. Um, sun is at high noon, basically. My ISO, I have that stopped down at 100. That's the lowest it'll go. And then my F-stop is still at a set 2.8, which you can't do anything with that anyways. So. What this tells you is is it's kind of just a mathematical equation. So you always so you always want to get your your shutter speed to twice the frame rate. If you need more light, you can you can step down the ND filter back to 16 or 4. But those are the things that are just easy to manipulate. And it's really just a matter of you know if it's super cloudy outside, you do use either no lens at all or the first ND4. If it's just partly cloudy outside, use the one in the middle, the ND8. But most of the time, it's it's just very bright because I'm always filming in, like to film in the best conditions, which means it's usually sunny outside. So that usually means um, lots of sunlight. So that puts the ND16 on here. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the gimbal settings. So what you want to do is go into the three dots on the top right hand corner of your screen. Three quarters of the way down, you'll see the gimbal setting the gimbal icon and you want to go into camera gimbal advanced settings so we'll click that right now <clears throat> actually let me set all these to default there's a default so if, if you're uncomfortable with making these changes just try it out and then you can reset all the settings if you want to it doesn't it doesn't harm anything so i'm going to reset all mine reset gimbal so right now the the max gimbal pitch speed is 20 and the gimbal start stop buffer is 15. The max gimbal pitch speed is 20. So let's just see what happens when you ramp this thing up to say 80. All right, so what I'm gonna do is in the background, see how twitchy and fast that gimbal is? You don't want it, you never wanna have something like that on your quad. So again, it was, uh, it was at 20. That was the default, and that's okay. I mean, it's it's still kind of fast, actually. So what I actually like is probably half that. 10, somewhere in that range. Let's see what that does. And I'm just doing a, like a half wheel press here. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, cranking it all the way, so. So I could go down one further. Uh, oops, nine. Let's try that. And I just like it to be nice and smooth. 
So just play around with that setting for sure. When you're cha when you're move you know moving the gimbal up like that, and then you take your hand off and it stops. So that is the gimbal start stop buffer. So currently it's set on 15 on a scale of 0 to 30, so that's half. So basically, do you want to add more buffer or take less? You know, take buffer out of it. I want to add more. And let's try, so let's try 20. So again, I'm gonna start rolling my gimbal down. And see how I take my fingers off and it, and it kind of keeps rolling and sets into a, a nice spot there. So I'll go up, take my finger off, and see how it kind of lifts up and then it settles. It doesn't just go and stop. So that's a good setting to, to mess with as well. So um, what I found here is, let's try 19. That's pretty good. Eh, I think I like it better on 20, works for me. So again, nine, nine on the gimbal pitch speed, that'll slow it down. And then the gimbal start stop buffer, I choose 20. Just play around with it. Just see what's, what's, what's comfortable for you. Another thing is the um, the extended gimbal tilt limit. Just leave that off. If you put that on, that allows your camera to point slightly up, and that'll get propellers in the shot, stuff like that. You really don't want that, so I just leave that off. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about the gimbal. So let's move on to the next thing, which is tweaking the sensitivity settings on the, the Mavic Air itself so that you can get this bird uh, flying as smooth as possible. Okay guys, so next I want to check out the sensitivity settings. This might not be the best time for this. There was a big storm that blew in la uh, last night, a nor e nor'easter. So, so next we want to go into the quad settings. You want to scroll down to the bottom. You want to look at advanced settings. So first you want to look at the EXP values. So what I'm looking at here is basically the EXP values are exponent or exponential values. And basically it is the sharpness of the curve on the input of your sticks when you make changes to the direction, the height, the throttle, etc. So the first one, and, and if you scroll up on this, it'll kind of describe what each axis does. So you have the X axis and the Y axis. So X axis shows the physical output of the manipulated stick. The Y axis shows the control output of the manipulated stick. It's on a range of 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. So throttle up and throttle down. <clears throat> this one, um, so the default is 0 0.4. So let me just show, show you what, uh, you know, 0 0.8 does. This makes it very responsive, very aggressive. So, so that's what I would not recommend. Go back to that. So see how the, the basically it's saying if you just barely touch up on the left throttle, it's gonna it's gonna be much more sensitive and much more aggressive. So with so with the throttle. I actually leave this one as the default of 4.0. Now rotate right and rotate left. So this is also your left stick, but it's the uh, basically the kind of like a yaw movement. So let me try manipulating that one, and we'll take that one down to 2.0. And you can kind of see the curve as it's as I'm putting more input in there. So right now I'm just barely barely putting input in there. It's turning. It's turning. It's turning. But it'll still go up to 100. So if I if I ramp it all the way over, see it'll still go just as fast. So I would leave that at, at 2.0. So it basically kind of deadens out the, the maneuverability of the stick or the sensitivity of the stick in those first couple millimeters when you're going left or right uh, on your yaw movements. Next is forward right and backward left. So let's ramp this one up and uh, say 0.8. It very responsive and this is your right hand steer going left or right so again this one is another one that you definitely want to tap down on so I'll put that one at 2.0 as well and now I go right barely creeping to the 
super windy out here. It's like 20 mile an hour winds. Apologize for the noise. So now I'm going left a little bit. All right, so those are the best settings I think for the EXP value. So again, I would leave the throttle up and the throttle down at 0.4, the rotate right and um, rotate left, and then the forward right, forward left, or backward left. I would put those Low battery warning. 0 0.20, and that should be about perfect for in terms of getting smooth settings. Okay, so last thing we're going to go over today is back to the sensitivity settings. So we're going to go to the top three dots again, hit the remote, I'm sorry, the MC settings at the top. I'm going to go to the advanced settings. We're going to tip on, tap on sensitivity. So I tried changing the attitude. The default is 100. I changed that down to 40 or 50. Didn't do anything that I could really tell in terms of handling the aircraft. The brake, if you take, if you change that from 130, that's basically lessening the amount of braking capability that the quad has or, or increasing the time it takes to come to a complete stop after you take your hands off any of the toggles. <clears throat> so I wouldn't recommend that. Now the yaw endpoint by default is set at 150. So what you can do is really take this down. I messed with this a little bit and it'll it'll basically slow down the sensitivity of the aircraft. So, so let, me, let me show you quickly what that looks like. So now if I go left, a little bit smoother. Go right, a little bit smoother there. So again, it just kind of deadens out those uh that part when you go barely left or barely barely right makes that a little bit less responsive so it takes away some of the takes away is produced by just just human hum, you know human input so anyway those are the settings for sensitivity and that is all that is needed from this point okay guys so like i said this is my favorite topic or one of them and so today, just to recap, what we covered was setting the correct color profile before you get set up, before you fly. That's getting into descent alike, do it going through the options, the color, contrast, saturation, and all those settings. So zero, negative three, negative two, you're golden, descent alike. Next, you wanna set the exposure correctly, 30 frames per second, one over 60 for your shutter speed, ISO 100, your f-stop is set, you don't have to do anything there, and you have to add an ND filter. And you have to add the ND filter to make it possible to shoot at a 60 shutter speed and 30 frame rate. Otherwise, it's, it's gonna be blown out and too light and too overexposed. After the exposure, we talked about how to set the gimbal settings. The gimbal settings is really just dialing down the sensitivity of the wheel or increasing the buffer speed of the gimbal buffer so that when you're panning, I'm sorry, when you're panning up and down and you take your hand off the wheel, it doesn't just stop, it kinda slowly stops. And then we went into the uh, EXP settings and the sensitivity settings. Again, those are basically just taking the, the toggle sticks and you wanna basically m create more play in those first couple millimeters going up and down or left and right. You wanna just create some uh, play in those areas so that if you go one mi millimeter over, it's not just like very responsive. You just wanna be able to gradually ease into it. And that doesn't, that doesn't take away from the overall speed of the aircraft. You can still go, you know, top speed at whatever it was, 22 to 24 in normal mode and 42 in sport mode. It just ramps up slow, you know, a little bit slower to get to those different speeds, um, which is what you want if you want more cinematic footage so we didn't touch the braking cinematic mode um, not a fan of cinematic mode only because when you take your hands off the toggle switch whether you're moving left or right or forward and back it's not gonna stop instantly it's gonna keep keep traveling yes that's more cinematic but it does introduce a little bit of risk into your flight if I'm flying around trees buildings any other kind of structure um, and I take my hand off the toggle for any for any reason I want the quad to stop period end of story so that's just my thoughts uh, i know a lot of people are big fans of cinematic mode um that's cool just just my thoughts so okay guys so that about wraps it up for me today i hope that i hope you found what you were looking for in this video like i said these are the best cinematic settings and the places that you go to tweak them so if you have questions or comments please leave them down below and i'll answer those as best i can everybody else feel free to jump in as well to answer questions um hope you enjoyed this video Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.